Hey everyone, and welcome to Financial Engineering with Artificial Intelligence in Python. So this course might come as a big surprise to a lot of you. In all my 30 or so previous courses, I focused solely on the topics of machine learning and data science. And I haven't until this point looked at any specific industry which applies machine learning and data science, whether that be biology, finance, or social networks. And if you think about it, that makes a lot of sense. If you start talking about finance, the biology student won't understand. And if you start talking about biology, the finance student won't understand. So I think it's more fair to students to talk about machine learning in a more general sense. You learn about the machine learning algorithms and you apply them to whatever industry you come from. In this course, we are going to drill down into a specific domain and that domain is financial engineering. So I think students of machine learning and AI are the best candidates for learning financial engineering. As you will come to learn in this course, many of the techniques we will use, you will already be familiar with from your studies in machine learning. So that's going to be the underlying perspective in this course. What does financial engineering look like to someone who at least knows the basics in machine learning? By taking this approach, this will let us go more in depth and gain a better understanding compared to say someone just approaching finance for the first time. Of course, if you're not a student of machine learning, that's okay too. If you clicked on this video, it's probably because you were looking for the words financial engineering. And if you were, then you are in the right place. This course is like financial engineering on steroids. Instead of being just plain old financial engineering, it's financial engineering with lots of extra bonus machine learning sprinkles. Okay, so what are we going to learn about in this course? This course is going to start from some very basic fundamentals. What is financial data? Where do we get it? What does it look like? How do we manipulate it in a computer program? In particular, this course will focus on stock prices and stock returns. We will spend a lot of time learning how to analyze the distribution of stock returns and how they might be correlated with other stock returns. In the next section, we will go in depth into time series analysis. Now in all my years studying machine learning, I've noticed that one of the most common questions students ask is, how can I predict stock prices with machine learning? This section will give you a very detailed answer to this question, probably more detailed than you even thought you would care to know. This section will look at various core techniques in time series analysis, such as the simple and exponential moving average, the whole Winters model, and the famous ARIMA model. And since this is a course about finance, there will be some finance specific details you want to be aware of. Specifically, we'll learn about the efficient market hypothesis and the random walk hypothesis. And we'll learn about what implications this has on the models we create. And one of the most important topics in this section is how to properly forecast. Unfortunately, the internet today is full of marketers. These marketers have promised to teach you how to do things like predict stock prices with LSTMs, and then they show you charts like this with nearly perfect stock price predictions. Now you've got to wonder, if I can just do this, why did we give a guy a Nobel Prize for inventing portfolio theory? If we can just predict stock prices, then we don't need portfolios. Let's just pick the stock with the highest forecast and make lots of money. In this course, I will expose the many mistakes made in these courses and blogs. If you've ever come across a course or a blog post about predicting stock prices with LSTMs, you will want to watch this. Okay, so the next section is going to be about modern portfolio theory. This section is the financial engineer's version of don't put all your eggs in one basket. In this section, we'll learn about why diversification is good and how it weakens our greatest enemy, which is risk. You'll learn about core topics in financial engineering, such as the efficient frontier, mean variance optimization, the sharp ratio, and the capital asset pricing model. Basically, given a universe of stocks, that is any set of stocks you want to consider buying, we will learn how to maximize return while at the same time minimizing risk. We will learn how investing in multiple stocks will always be better than investing in just a single stock. We can get higher returns and lower risk. Okay, so in the next section, we are going to learn about algorithmic trading. So previously, when we looked at portfolio theory, it was all about which stocks to buy and which stocks to sell. In this section, it's all about determining when is the best time to buy and when is the best time to sell. As you probably already know, if you try to use your emotions, you're going to have a bad time. 
When people use their emotions, they tend to buy high and sell low. They see a stock going up and they think it's a great deal. They see a stock going down and they get scared and cut their losses. Unfortunately, this is the exact opposite of what we logically know we should do. We want to buy low and sell high. This results in a profit. Algorithmic trading is all about how to automate buying and selling decisions so that you do not depend on your emotions, which are, let's face it, probably wrong. We will look at both traditional trading strategies as well as those based on machine learning and reinforcement learning. All right, so I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of what we will cover in this course. So just to summarize, first we will start by understanding financial data, specifically stock prices and stock returns. Next, we will look at time series analysis. How do stock prices and stock returns evolve over time? Next, we will look at portfolio theory. How do we choose the right set of stocks in the right proportions such that we maximize return and minimize risk? And finally, we will look at algorithmic trading. How do we automate the process of buying and selling to avoid trading on emotion? So I hope this all sounds very exciting. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in the next lecture.